What's up everyone, Ben here again with another video for Fluent in Finance, the channel dedicated to all things personal finance. And today I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Hard work is overrated. There, I said it. You mad bro? You see, we live in a world where hard work is seen as a, a virtue, something that should be admired and, and you should strive to, to work hard all the time. In fact, if you don't work hard, you're almost an outcast of society. You're seen as being lazy, or good for nothing, or worthless, or that you don't contribute your fair share, and that somebody else has to pick up your slack. Growing up, we're taught that the only way to succeed in life is to study hard and work hard. In everything that we do, we have to give it 100%. And then it should come as no surprise when we finally become adults. Uh, in an ongoing effort to, to chase after this carrot that's being dangled in front of our face, that we put in 60, 70, 80 hours a week at work trying to impress our boss. We hope that one day by, by, by working hard enough that we're going to impress him, and then when it comes time for promotion, our boss will remember all those great things and all the hard work and dedication that we, we put into this company and, and we'll get that promotion. We kill ourselves at work. We spend so much time there. We, we work the weekends and, and we come home physically and mentally drained. So that even once we are home and are able to spend time with our family, we don't. We come home and we turn on the TV and, and we just want to vegetate and relax and we just need a break. So even our time spent with our family isn't really spending time with your family. Now there's nothing wrong with working hard per se, but you have to know when to pick and choose your battles. What's worth working for and what's not. You see, contrary to what everybody tells you, working hard is not the key to success. The actual key to success I learned at a very early age uh, from watching cartoons of all things. You see, when I was younger, I would come home from school every day and I would watch Disney's DuckTales, a cartoon that featured a fictional character, Ebenezer Scrooge, based off of the original Christmas Carol. Now, in this cartoon, Mr. Scrooge was incredibly wealthy. He was a businessman who was constantly making deals uh, and he would also go on adventures with his three nephews. Now in the cartoon, Mr. Scrooge was so incredibly wealthy that he actually builds a money bin, a giant silo that he just fills up with his treasures and he actually goes and, and swims in his vast quantities of money. That's how he relieves stress. Now the cartoon generally centered around the adventures that Mr. Scrooge and his three nephews would go on. But quite often, the show featured a subplot or a theme uh, that had sound financial principles built into the storyline, many of which I still follow today. In one such episode, Mr. Scrooge is telling his three nephews how he initially made his fortune. You see, he didn't always start off rich. He didn't come from a rich family. In fact, he came from a, an extremely poor family. So when he was a teen, he, he needed to go to work and start earning income for his family. And he would try to go around town and, you know, apply for jobs and, and economy sucks and nobody's hiring and he couldn't get a job and, and what are you going to do? So finally he found a place that would hire him, uh, except they didn't actually pay him. You see, he just worked for tips. He got a job at a barber shop and while the customers were waiting for their haircut, he would go and shine their shoes. And his first customer was a ditch digger. So this guy was walking around in the mud all day long and his shoes were just caked with dirt. But Mr. Scrooge didn't care. You see, he saw this as an opportunity and he worked hard. He probably worked for hours shining and buffing this gentleman's shoes until eventually his shoes were like a glass mirror. They were, they were immaculate. And for his efforts, the gentleman paid him one single dime. It wasn't even enough to do anything with. Now, in the story, this dime would be a symbolic gesture. His number one dime that is often referenced uh, as the source of his wealth. 
So you see, Mr. Scrooge wasn't opposed to working hard. If that's what the situation called for, then, then that's what he was going to do. But in the back of his mind, he always remembered lessons that his father had taught him. You see, his father always taught him to work smarter, not harder. And with this principle in mind, Mr. Scrooge returned to work the next day, and he devised a conveyor belt system that allowed him to shine the shoes of multiple people all at the same time and with very little effort. Now, the system allowed him to generate a lot of money in a very short amount of time. And he used that money to purchase a ticket to come over to America, where he continued to showcase his financial wizardry. And he had a lot of success. Sometimes he re was required to work very hard. He continually demonstrated his ability and his willingness to work hard when the situation called for it, but his biggest success stories always came when he was working smarter and not harder. Now, obviously, the cartoon and the conveyor belt situation is obviously fictitious, but the overall principle that it is trying to teach these young kids, it still holds true today. You need to work smarter. You see, a lot of people work really hard, and they don't end up having much to show for it. And this can be very frustrating, and, and it can lead to feelings of resentment uh, and anger towards people that maybe they are successful and wealthy. And I think that has a lot to do with why people are uh, upset with the 1% um, movement in America. But hard work alone will only get you so far in life. I, I know a lot of people that work super hard all their lives, and they have nothing to show for it. You see, hard work must be focused. It must be targeted in order to achieve the best results. Simply working hard just for the sake of working hard is not going to get you anywhere. Worse yet, most people work hard at a business, a company, that's owned by someone else. So all of their hard work and effort, the person that really benefits from all of this is the owner. It's, it's not the individual employee that's working hard. Yeah, maybe he'll get a raise or a promotion, but ultimately, it's the owner that benefits from that hard work. As an employee, there is very little, if anything, that you do that actually directly benefits you. Therefore, your goal should not be, how can I work hard to impress my boss? Your goal should be, how can I become the boss? Don't work hard just to work hard. Identify a problem and come up with creative solutions that are better than the existing way of doing things. Now, this might be identifying inefficiencies in your workplace that allow workers to get more done in less time. Or it could be macro-level tasks that streamlines the entire process and, and benefits everybody in the company. And quite often, that means leaving your job and creating a new business of your own to directly compete with your old boss. You see, he's over here working hard, but if you work smart, you will be so much more efficient. And in the long run, that efficiency will allow you to dominate the marketplace. So there you have it. Teach your kids to work with their mind, to come up with creative solutions to life's everyday problems. Have them color outside the lines. If your kids can master this fundamental skill and become a problem solver, then they'll go a lot farther in life than any hard worker ever will. Now, I'm not saying that all instances of hard work is bad. After all, Mr. Scrooge wasn't afraid to get in there and shine that ditch digger's shoes. But you need to be able to distinguish the times when you need to work hard versus the times that you need to work smart. And more often than not, the answer to life's problems is to work smarter, not harder. If you guys like this video, be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment down below. I post new videos every week. Thanks, and I'll see you again next time.